Okay, so we're going to do what I like to call my little flower vase, or vase of flowers, or, or whatever. It's a pendant. You could make it into a brooch if you wanted to. But um, they can look quite uh, elaborate like this one. If you like a lot of swirlies and stuff, well, go for it. Um, if you like simple, then you just don't do as many. This is done with 18 gauge copper wire that I antiqued. And today I'm going to try, ha ha ha, we'll see if it works, um, stainless steel wire in 20 gauge. I don't have any silver wire on me right now to do one, and I really want to do this video. So we're going to try the stainless steel. We'll see how, how tough it is, how, what kind of problem we end up with. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, we're going to get started. Okay, the stainless steel wire is stiff. It is a stiff wire, and it's going to continue to work harden as I work it. So this will be interesting. Um, I like to straighten my wire. These are fabulous little wire straighteners, and I am going to sell these on my website once I get it up. Um, we want to just make sure our, our wire is straightened. And I like to do it just right on the spool. And I'm going to cut off probably about uh, two, and a half, two and a half to three feet of wire just to make sure. If you come up short, you can always add extra wire. And so then I'm just going to cut this. Now, I don't like using my good cutters. I've kind of ruined these a bit. I uh, used this on memory wire. I Julia's riching herself a bed in the background on the rug. Um, so I did it way back here so I didn't ruin my tips, but I have another pair that are brand new. So these are now going to become my, my grungy wire cutters for stuff like stainless steel. All right. But I do suggest that you never use your good cutters on memory wire. Use a cutter that is specifically for it. Okay, so let's find the center. And let's just sort of fold it like that so we know where our center is. And we're going to make our bale first. So we're going to take our handy dandy bale making pliers. And you can choose whatever size you want for your bale. I just usually go for um, the smaller size on here. That's probably about 5 millimeter. And... Um, that's, that's, that's pretty big. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this. Let's do it this way. All right. And now we're just going to crisscross, crisscross our wire over the top. Okay, and now we're going to turn this all the way around the mandrel. So I'm going to flip it over. My wire won't clear the table. All right, so now keeping our wire on their sides, don't let them cross over. We're going to make ourselves a nice little double loop on our bale. And just keep your wires nice and straight. Don't uh, put big kinks in them. Okay, and so this is what we end up with. A little doubled bale. Okay, so now we're going to wire wrap. We're going to make ourselves our stem, and we're going to take our flat nose plier, and I like to just stick it right into, right into my loop, and I'm going to bend it straight up. Okay, that's going to become our stem wire, so we have that, and now I'm going to wrap this wire around it, and I'm going to wrap it down uh, to where I want to start my... Um, uh, the bottom of my vase. So you're going to consider I want this section to be f my flowers and then my base is going to be my bead down here. So I'm going to go and wrap it around this far down and that will add support to my to the center of my wire. I've got lots of wire here to work with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it in here just to keep that shape and now I'm just going to take my wire And this will end up getting covered up with beads, so it doesn't have to be fancy or pretty. But we're just going to wind our wire. My lights are hooked onto my chairs over here, and uh, my wire keeps hitting it. Okay, so look at the bead that you choose to be your vase. Okay, I'm going to use this this blue bead here, and and uh, just look at what the proportion is. I think that's I think that's good. That's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up after I've dropped it, 
All right, so now I'm going to run this vase at the bottom of my stem wire here. And I'm going to turn my bale so it's facing the right direction. That's going to be end up being all kind of wobbly and out of out of proportion while you're working, but you can always fix it afterwards. Now I want to take my wire and I'm going to just bend it sharply against the back side like that. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to run it underneath this wire. And I'm going to wrap it around my stem twice. So I have this coming out. Now, I'm going to tighten that up with my flat nose just by giving it a little turn, a little spin. And that, that tightened that up in the back there. Okay, so now we're ready to go. We're going to start adding our flowers. Now, I've got a mix of beads here. Um, I've got some, some six mil crystals, some ceramic beads, some dyed agate, some size six seed beads, and some other little doodads in there. I'm not sure how pretty that's going to be, but I think, I think that's a nice colorful mix. Anyway, let's we'll just see what we end up with. All right, I'm going to fix this. Okay, so now I have these two wires here to start adding my flowers. And what you want to do is you want to keep it in proportion. So pay attention, if you're putting a lot of beads on this side and this side looks sparse, just, just keep looking where you can keep popping some beads in to make it look uh, balanced. And you could put big beads or little beads. You can put more than one bead on. Um, okay, so I'm going to be going in this direction up towards the top. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a larger bead and I'm going to start with my little frosted cracked uh, I'm not quite sure what it is, agate. Alright, so I'm going to push that up against it and I'm going to sh sharply now you could do something different. You can go ahead and let, I'll do one right now. I'm going to do a little swirly thing See there like that? And now I'm going to take this to the back and I'm going to wrap it around and anchor it in. Okay, now that one's going in that direction. Okay, so now I can add a bead on this side. And don't forget, we're going to fill in the front here too. So you can, uh, maybe I'll leave this one, not wrap it all the way to the side. I'm going to leave it out towards the front here so I can get something in the front there. Let's do Let's do a silver bead. Okay, and now I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to wrap it around the stem. You can wrap it wherever you can see fit, in between beads, wherever you want. Okay, so now I'll wrap that up through. So I'll bring this one up. Maybe I'll bring something forward. All right, let's put a little. Now let's balance this out now here, and we're gonna put. Let's put. Um, let's put this splash of orange agate bead in there. Oh, that looks pretty. Okay, so for him, I'm just going to bring that to the back. I really don't want to wrap around my other wire. I'm going to leave that one out. Okay, and I'm going to... There we go. Okay, I think I'm going to take this wire. I'm going to add a little sparkle coming down the center here. So I'm going to add a crystal. Hopefully I've picked out ones that will um, fit through the holes. They're Chinese crystals, so sometimes the holes are nice and big, and sometimes they're not. So let's go with... Let's go with this um let's go with this little this blue in here. I tend to get a little carried away. You know that saying less is more. Sometimes I get downright gaudy. And then I'm not so sure whether I like it or not. Now with crystals you gotta be really careful because we don't want to snap our crystal. So we're going to uh, be very, very careful.
Now I could even add another little bead. See how the wire is showing, but you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to do a little a little twist in hopes that I don't snap my break my crystal cuz this wire is really stiff and it's getting stiffer. bring it down. Okay, and now I'm going to bring it down and under, so see how I'm able to hide that. Listen, I've made some of these that are absolutely gorgeous and some that are absolutely gaudy, but the ones that I thought were gaudy, when I went back and looked at them again, they weren't so bad. Okay, so let's see here. I think I need a nice big bead in the back here. I got this really pretty silver one here. Let's see how I can fit that in there. Let's see here. I think I'll put it on this one back here. Oh, let's see here. Hmm, hmm, maybe I'm not liking this so much. Let's see here, I think I'll just wedge him in there. Okay, it looks like I could use a bead going, filling in that space right there. I might not end up liking how this is going to turn out. So here I got a yellow ceramic bead. Let's see how that will look. This little green crystal here. Oops, yikes, don't pull too hard. This wire is hard to, to work with, but it's it, it's it's working, it's doable, it's it's getting there. Hmm. I don't know. I kinda don't like it, but what do you think? <laughs> I mean you can get a you can get an idea. Alright, let's see what we could do here in this back part here. See what I'm saying? I, I tend to overdo it. I probably could have picked my beads better but oh well that fills that in nicely right there too alright so we're gonna just take this and I'm gonna bring it to the back and this is what the back side is looking like and see I can you can just run that through through beads Well, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? You get the general idea. All right, so now for my loose wires here. I'm going to do a spiral here and bring it down. Or I'll do a spiral and bring it up in here somewhere. And this back piece here. What do we got going on here? Let's see here. Eh, maybe I'll just tighten that up. Just to tighten everything up, I'll just hook him inside. I'm going to take my chain nose and I'm just going to turn my end in. 
and tuck that in. There we go. That end is nice and tucked in, no sharp edges, and now I'm going to do a little swirly thing here. It's been a while since I made one of these. After you've made a couple of them, you get really good at, at positioning your wire and stuff, but I haven't done it in a while. Now I'm going to flush cut this end. Okay. And now I'm going to do a spiral. So should I do a spiral going up this way and nestle it in there or come down and put it on the vase? Hmm. I think I'm going to spiral it and, and fill in that little spot right there because you can kind of see in there and that really could use something right there. So let's see if I can make this happen. Take the round nose. There we go. Isn't that cute? That looks cute right there. So we're going to bring it up a little bit. There. Now I'm going to take this, and I like to separate that a little bit. Makes it look a little more elegant. You don't have to, though. And there, there's our little vase of flowers pendant. What do you think? <laughs> you get the idea though see I mean you could go crazy or you could keep it simple um, I didn't give myself a really good variety of beads to work with I was just was scrambling around trying to find odds and ends here and in my oh so creativeness thought I could come up with something so like you can tighten up these wires in the back too with your with your flat nose so you're just gonna grab it and give it just a little twist But I did use wire that isn't real forgiving. All right, so there. <laughs> there it is. Isn't it cute? I think it's adorable. I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you'll give this a try. So this was 20 gauge wire, and 18 works really nice too. And um, you want to use soft wire. Like I said, this is stainless steel wire. Give it a try after you've practiced a little bit. It is a little bit different. But um, I think that actually looks quite cute. I'm happy with that. Have a fabulous day. See ya.